Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of KYTL. It's me, Abby. I'm back here again with my co-hosts, Abby and Abby. <laughs> What's up, guys? It's Abby. Hey, it's, it's Abby here. Um, <laughs> honestly, I, I give you balls for uh, referencing Abby so quick. You know, it seems like there's a lot of negative reception to, to that kind of thing. Probably the most polarizing episode in Sorry Michigan mm. history, I feel like, and with good reason, because it's just, yeah, it's it's not fun for people's games that were affected. And, you know, I feel like the yeah. edit tried to make the best of it, but it's a it's a it's a weird situation for sure. Yeah, it's tough because like going into a season like this, people do so much prep and like I just know they like. I mean, Megan and, and Jackson did so much to even like to throw everyone off that it's like this just sucks. Mm -hmm. They did a lot. It reminds me kind of of uh, the Alexes and how they like tried to, and I guess Cooper and Leia too. They tried to hide the relationship, like unfriend each other on Facebook, like delete all photos of each other. You know, well, yeah, the that, season. that's a good point. It's like if somebody had told everyone that the Alexes knew each other, I don't know. Do you think they would have gone to the end? Probably not. I don't know. Probably not. I don't know. But like, he... also, I feel like in talking to a lot of the people, I'm just trying to bring back to season one. I remember even a lot of them saying like, I don't know, they knew that Alex's were close. Like mm. maybe the fact that they were roommates was a big thing. But I remember that kind of being a thing. They're like, they weren't that shocked by it. So I mean, yeah. I can see how it could play into the game, but like, I don't know. It did mm. seem like the at the relation like alex and alex's relationship with each other and keeping this secret it seems like it was always like so much more important to the alexes than it was to the rest of the cast like right. they thought like this is like the most important thing if we're found out like that's the end of our games versus everyone else is kind of like okay like whatever i don't really care we already grouped them as a pair anyways i don't know it seems more intense for megan and jackson though especially because it's, it's definitely a yeah returning season mm-hmm and like, like jackson's different. reputation yep i mean well a question that i have always had about this is do the both of you think that in the first place this was a good move by megan and jackson to hide the relationship or should mm. they you know was this always a ticking time bomb that was going to come off go off at a certain point or do you know that you know I think had, it was a good move. You think that that they made the right call, even just like hindsight's twenty twenty. Regarding, you think that that was what they should have done. I personally think it was a good call because it's a good way to get information if people think they're not talking. But it's only a good call if they can fully pull it off the whole time. Hmm. Which yeah, I think they could have. Well, what happens when they're on a tribe together and people are expecting them to vote against each other, or and if they they're don't. truly going to say, "Oh, we're on different sides." You well, know, you'll just have do? to. You, they'll just have to finesse people into thinking they're they're somehow on the same side but not dating yeah I, I feel like with these type of lies that are just the big bombshell lies that you have to keep up it's really double-edged because like if you do keep it a secret then yeah it could really benefit you but then like if, like these big things being revealed that you have to keep up the entire time it could it's just, it's a bomb you know if it goes off and then it could completely tank your game so like it's, I guess, kind of the idea of, like, do you want to play it safe and, like, try to, like, you know, limit the amount of big lies or, like, things you can get caught in? Or do you want to try, you know, with an all-star season to do as many things as you can that might backfire on you? Mm -hmm. And so, like, I feel like it almost makes more sense to do these big type of bombshell lies in an all-star season where you kind of have more you want to risk, you know, and it's your second time out there. Like, why not completely go for it? But I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, I think the biggest benefit is like covering each other's blind spots. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like um, if Jackson hears like Megan's on the board, chopping block or whatever, you know, that's like useful, useful information. That's like the number one helpful. It's true. They are getting thing. different information. I, I will say one aspect to play devil's advocate. It seems of this, at least the very early stages of the all-star season. I think that the, the, this line is definitely but they're doing it with more of like a long-term vision. Mm -hmm. the beginning of the game, it seems like people are really focused on like, I want to align myself with people that have connections. That's kind of what a big reason we saw with the Odawa tribe and why Cooper and Andrew decide to side with Bailey over Emily is, oh, we think Bailey has more connections than other tribes that will allow us to 
you know, at a swap, have more people we can work with. There's a, there's a argument to be made that, oh, maybe Jackson could have been in a better position in his tribe if people are like, mm. oh, you're connected to Megan. I like Megan. I want to work with Megan at a swap. So Jackson is someone I can work with because she work versus the narrative. Oh, like Jackson has nobody. He's on his own. He's an easy vote. He's enemies with Megan, who I like. Mm. Therefore, I don't want to yeah. work with Jackson now because Megan doesn't want to work with Jackson. It, that, I, at a certain point, cool. you know, the game might flip. And now suddenly those pairings are seen as a threat. But, you know, there's an argument to be made that maybe... Um, there could be positive too to being in like a public pairing. Mm -hmm. But then I think that does also play back into the risking reward. So like that might give you a lot better chance of getting to the merge or whatever. But also if you are a known couple in the game, like literally like the tightest possible pair, like that makes it a lot harder for both of you to get to the end. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. So we did see like, with, yeah. Good. We did see with Devin and Dylan that having a secret pair was like really instrumental to ultimately how they got to the end. Mm -hmm. But it is going to be hard, I feel like, for this lie, especially for people who like have a known history, because that is always mm -hmm. going to be in the back of your head. Like, are they actually like broken up? Like, or even if they are broken yeah. up, like, could they, you know, still have a soft spot for each other and be friends, you know, and that. Like, I feel like it's yeah. a lot easier to hide a relationship when it's, like, actually completely secret. Mm -hmm. There's, like, nothing linking you guys. Yeah. yeah. Versus, like... Strong. That's true. I mean, you see it in a few confessionals. Like, even yours, Sam. Like, I feel like you, you believed the lie, but you're like, mm, did they? Like, it's at least a question. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's true. I mean, I guess, like, let's say in the scenario that, that Abby doesn't leak this information and they're at, like, the final six together mm -hmm. and voting together, you know, at that point... Are people really are people really believing the lie that they're not together or they're not at least yeah. hiding something? No, right. that's true. But then maybe that's what they say, like, well, now it's too late. Now we're in the final mm -hmm. six, and maybe it's kind of like Boston Robin Amber. You get to a certain point to where like people can't really do anything about it. Yeah. yeah that's true. The original all-star season, <laughs> the, the couple won, you know. Mm -hmm. So and they're pretty obviously a couple. So maybe that says something for not mm -hmm. keeping it a secret. I don't know. But has the game of Survivor progressed since season eight mm. of CBS Survivor? Probably. <laughs> <Good little. laughs> I don't think that would happen again, but. I, I even, do love. Sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say, like, even after the lie, I feel like it was kind of hard for people to be upset at Megan just because she's so likable. Mm -hmm. Like, were mm -hmm. you, but you, you did seem to be like genuinely hurt by it, though. I think that I understood on a game level why they did that. I mean, even now, I feel like. It's an interesting discussion whether or not, you know, do you lie about it? Do you be straight up? Um, there's a lot of risk and reward. There's pros and cons. I can understand totally, though, on a game perspective, why. But on a personal perspective, it does it does suck because, you know, like I was saying in the episode, this was like six months before the game, like mm -hmm. well before the game. And it felt, I guess, like it was outside of the game to be like, oh, you know, this is the summer before the game and I'm talking about, a breakup with my friend versus like, oh, that's really just like this like 6D chess, like, you know, manipulating a, this breakup that actually didn't happen. Um, is another interesting, I mean, to the extent that Megan went to and Jackson went to, I think is really crazy, but I also love it for the TV aspect. I, I think Megan mentioned earlier in the season, like, oh, I also even um, lied to Camila about this because she has a big mouth. Yeah. It's not even in the <laughs> game. And I remember at the time, like Camila found out about Megan and Jackson dating and she was really upset because mm. she's like, I'm not even in all stars. And Megan still lied to me about this relationship yeah. over the past six mm -hmm. months. Like they well, really went deep into these lies. And also, I mean, Camila was a potential all star, too. So, I mean, I guess it makes sense for her. That's to, true. Yeah. yeah. Even after the, the casting, mm -hmm. she didn't find out. She yeah. found out, I think, around the same time that um, the Abby leaked all this information. But yeah, that's the thing too. I mean, Megan and Jackson, they were thinking way ahead. And I do really love for a TV perspective that they did this. And it really sucks that it was ruined by things outside of their control. Mm -hmm. um, because it would have been really interesting to see how it played out had it not been leaked. I, I do want to address some of like the comments and stuff. Like people hating on Noah specifically. Mm -hmm. Like Noah didn't do anything on production that like anybody else did you know like we were like for better or for worse like everybody 
on production on any Survivor Michigan season, like chats about the game to people outside of the game, you know? And like, even like the season prior, like season four, my girlfriend at the time, Kat, was on production. And, you know, obviously she didn't leak anything to me. She probably kind of hated me. So, you know, maybe, maybe she tried to dip my game. But anyways, <laughs> um, no, but like, I think Noah wasn't doing anything malicious or like out of line by talking to Abby. It's not his fault at all. Mm -hmm. And like, we're all chatting about the game, out, like two other people. And now, I mean, yeah. like the point is to be made, like, should that be a rule that you can't talk about, you know, stuff that's happening in the game to people not in the game? Like maybe, but that wasn't a rule that was in place. That wasn't like he yeah. broke any rules of Survivor Michigan. Yeah, it's just tough because we're they were roommates, right? Yeah. So... Yeah, that, that's where it gets dicey because it's like obviously all three of them are hanging out a lot. Mm -hmm. And like Survivor is such a big part of everyone's life that like it comes up. But then it's like, yeah, oh, I don't know. I, it's just weird. I think that the thing is like Noah never shared any information with Bailey or had any intentions of, you know, helping Bailey in any way and doing that. And the thing that, you know, I fully agree, like if you're going to be upset with the rule that contestants that like producers shouldn't be sharing anything about the game with people that aren't producers then you really gotta blame survivor production going all the way back to the very beginning it's more of a systemic thing it was just like you know the, the thing is too you gotta understand like the line between producer and non-producer is very blurred especially around this time where we were a student club that like had just started and anyone that had played a past season was invited to be on production Mm -hmm. But like the line of like what defined a producer and not a producer was also very blurred. Like yeah. people that were past players would kind of come in, in and out, shuffle in and out, show up to maybe one, even one or two things a season and just like film a little video. Like, I guess you're a producer now. Like if you're a past player, it was pretty much seen as like totally fine to share information. And people, people that have played in the past too were always curious about what was going on, even if they weren't as involved with production. And it was always seen as totally normal to, tell them. I mean, I remember even actually talking a few in one of these past podcasts, like you would always FaceTime Sarah into the um, tribal councils and stuff. You wanted to see what's happening, you know, yeah. it's like you weren't a student, but you're also like involved kind of, you know what I mean? It's, it's the line between producer and non-producer was very blurred, but in general, it was just an understanding that you never thought anybody that, that was getting this information would ever tell the contestants. Yeah, yeah, the thing I've noticed about Star Michigan is the production team is like huge. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's like almost like out of control. It's like everyone's a part of production. Do you think it should be a rule that producers can't be like connected like that to a player or no? In general, no. we're always going to be connected. Yeah. I mean, we're all connected. We're all friends. Like it's no, like, like dating. Can, where's the line drawn? I mean, I guess it's kind of this like dating friends is also mm -hmm. kind of a, yeah. I don't know. I think there's just some trust that has to go into it. You gotta yeah. learn how to trust. <laughs> no, yeah. Was it but, Mitch who said that? Who yeah. said that? It was Mitch. Or, yeah, I don't know. Or no, it was Cooper. Yeah, Cooper. Yeah, Cooper said that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That was one of his farewell thing. Yeah. Yes. Um, no, but yeah, but like even me and you, Sarah, like we we were like on production for All Stars. Right. So you can see our names come up in the little screenshots. But like I feel I didn't really do that much actually to help. I mostly I was just, just in to, the group chats. Yeah, be in the group <laughs> yeah. chats and see what was happening. We're the alumni yeah. advisory board. Yeah, like exactly. <laughs> My advisory board. So, yeah, it, it does really, it does really suck though. I mean, you really feel for Megan and Jackson here. Um, it just sucks for them because it, it wasn't fair. I mean, they really, they really end up taking like the brunt of all of this ultimately. And like, it just sucks. Yeah. On a different note, I think I didn't realize that Oscar was an actual person. Like when she was talking about yeah. asking Oscar to come to the party, I was like, wait, Oscar's a real person? Mm -hmm. I thought it was just like a, a name. I, I do wish Oscar would have came to the party yeah, where this information too. was yeah. leaked, and then it would just really <laughs> be can, like. <laughs> <laughs> it's like at the party, they realize, like, wait, yeah. who is this guy? <laughs> Megan, make out with him now if he's actually your boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> I think that Oscar was like i mean and megan was an ra at this time i think he was like also a grad student or like lived in her dorm or something and like had asked her out and then she was like oh, oh no like you can't i actually can't go out with you i'm already dating 
this guy hey, Jackson. But you could be my awkward. fake boyfriend. Okay, that's okay. No, that's all. And he's like, uh, kind of sure, I mean, there. I guess. Yeah, I feel that. He's like, awesome. whatever. <laughs> And then when she asked him, like, oh, can you come to this party and pretend to be my big boyfriend? He was like, okay, like, no, like, I, I don't really feel comfortable doing that. Like, I'm not going to okay. go. So you know, I, the, yeah. the theme of this episode, Megan's kind of more of a player than you really think she is, you know, <laughs> in Maybe multiple ways. she has ways. more in common than Jackson than we think she does. Yeah. <laughs> she hides under a smile, but, you know. Yeah. Damn. That's a, that's a pretty savage move. That is savage. savage. Yeah. One of my favorite parts of the episode, though, was was Shannon. Shannon's yes. appearance, such a funny narrator. And, like, honestly, I needed that idol recap. I was a little confused. And mm -hmm. she, like, she summarized it really well. She did. I love uh, how she gave Emily the name Emily Beast. Emily Beast. <laughs> no, so good. So good to see her on our screens again. And, like, I, I hope that continues because... I'm sure it's just going to be even more confusing as it goes on with more idols and stuff. And yeah, now, um, yeah, I guess, yeah, skipping ahead a little bit, but what do you guys think of the production decision to leave it up in the air of who has the idol between Crouch and Emily Beast? I love it. Because you know it's going to come into play at some point that there's going to be a flashback as to, like, mm -hmm. who has the real one. It's just more dramatic. Yeah. And one of them, yeah, one of them is probably going to play it and it's going to be like, wait, is this real? It's going to be... Right. Da -da 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 flashbacks is, yeah. yeah yeah it's a lot of flashbacks but i feel like it, it's it's fun it makes i mean i feel like the one way to edit this is like show instantly like who has a real one and who has the fake one and it's kind of like all right like now you know and kind of the right. drama's gone instead mm -hmm. it can be drawn out for who knows how long which is fun it's kind of yeah because i feel like it's fun having the audience not even know because i feel like that's one thing that at least in most if not all Star Wars seasons, I can think of that, that the audience knows who has the idol. I mean, sometimes I guess somebody mm -hmm. pulls out an idol and it flashes back to them finding it, but like knowing if an idol mm -hmm. is real or not, it's fun to have that yeah. kind of, you know, suspense in there with the players, not knowing if their idol is real or not. It kind of puts you into the mindset of the players themselves, because if you find something, you don't know yourself whether mm -hmm. it's real or not. And like, you know, you might be playing as if it's real or as if it's not real. And mm -hmm. I feel like it's interesting to kind of be in that perspective. And then, you know, after the season's done, you know everything, it'll be fun to rewatch it and kind of like see everything through the lens of like knowing it all, which I think I, I love about, oh, that's what a lot of what Ian does with these flashbacks. I know that sometimes it can be like, it can feel, it could feel confusing upon a first watch because so much is happening and you don't always have all the information, but it makes it so much better on a rewatch when you know and can kind of see like the foreshadowing and, and things mm -hmm. like that. Yeah, so okay, so basically now AJ actually has a real idol, and then yes. either Emily B or Andrew has the real one, and the third one has yep. not been found, right? Correct. Okay. You can always trust Shannon's uh mm -hmm. if Shannon says something, then it's real. <laughs> you can trust that. Shannon will never Shannon will never lie. Yeah. Love never it. lie to any of us. <laughs> of course not. Except for you, Chad. <laughs> okay. Uh what should we talk about next? Challenge. Uh, yeah, uh, before the challenge, uh, I did want to talk about, I kind of steal a joke from, uh, Survivor Maryland. I feel like commented this uh, Austin from Survivor Maryland. Um, you know, everybody, Cooper was getting so ready to like, you know, throw all of his clothes off for the challenge. You know what? Maybe actually had a point about, you know, his white people being a little too willing to get naked. <laughs> I know there's so many, whenever I see Survivor Maryland comment on the chat, I like, I'm like, this is so quotable. I, I definitely wrote yeah. down some of mm -hmm. their quotes too. I forgot what it was, but I quoted them as well somewhere. Austin's so funny. Wait, is it Austin writing or is it Ander? Ander? Yeah, I think Austin, it's Austin. Yeah, it's Austin. Austin. Comes oh, with the Maryland. okay. Ander's comment says himself. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Okay. So shout out to you both. Shout yeah. out to both Austin and Maryland. As well. Wait, the OG yeah. creator of College yeah. Survivor? No way. Yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah. Honored. He picked me on his uh, fantasy draft team. Hopefully, hopefully oh, I won't nice. disappoint. Well, we'll see. Nice. Okay, yeah, but Fear Pong. Honestly, what, what a, challenge. a fun challenge to watch. <laughs> what a challenge. <laughs> I don't know. Like some of the things y'all had to do. I okay. I'm fine with licking a foot. The passing mouth to mouth is okay. I think telling my mom I'm pregnant. I don't. That would not 
be fun. I don't yeah, know if I would do that cool. one. How'd your parents feel about that, Sam? <laughs> uh, my mom was definitely really upset with me. Um, I feel like my dad like didn't. Did I? I don't know. He didn't know until after it was like already known to be false. So he was like, whatever. Mm-hmm. I watched that episode with my parents as well, and they like, they're like, okay, like, whatever. My mom's still annoyed. My dad was like, okay, it's just whatever. It's kind of funny. <laughs> um, but I, I think there's a point to be. It's both very funny, but also like, there's a point to be made that like it does, it, it does kind of. It's a little bit iffy in that like usually these challenges are just impacting you or people in the game mm-hmm. sort of thing is like you're causing stress to somebody that's like not even involved in the game so where it's like okay should we really be impacting people that like have aren't playing survivor like should they really be negatively impacted by this um right. but you know you're just it, saying it that because you had to do it sam <laughs> yeah 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 that was and one then, of the know, best ones to watch though yeah yeah it was everyone it was, was like, great tv cringe- like everyone there was like, oh, oh my cringing gosh. so hard. It's like the secondhand embarrassment. Why and Nick was mom... like, I can't believe she believed that. <laughs> <laughs> he was more upset about that than having yeah. to do it. <laughs> Bree's dad was like really upset too. And he was like gonna fly to Michigan and like the, the rules you're not supposed allowed to tell your parents until after the challenge is done, but he was like looking for flights and like doing all this <laughs> stuff like brie had to like tell him before like no like don't buy a flight oh my like God. Wait, so i can see how like ordered her food though so she broke the rules of the challenge she did she did oh my god he was like halfway here <laughs> yeah see don't so i can see how like all right <laughs> if, if yeah. she had followed the verbatim rules of the challenge yeah his dad may have been out of flight so it's probably not great. I, I see your point, Sam. I think it might have been slightly better if you were able to immediately say, just kidding, yeah. you know? And not yeah, have him be stressed yeah. for five, ten, whatever minutes. Mm-hmm. Oh, the challenge went on for like an hour. No, oh, well, yeah. Then But yeah. yeah, yeah. Was your phone just getting blown up, Sam? Yes. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. But it was I appreciate good TV, even if it impacts me negatively. You know, similar thing with Megan and Jackson. Like mm-hmm. it's it's good TV, so I can't complain about yeah. it. You got put through the ringer a bit this episode, didn't you? It was it was quite a time. Mm-hmm. Maybe Did the Survivor any- gods punishing you for your hubris the first couple episodes. You know, <laughs> I think that uh, yeah yeah I've been put to jail for my crimes. Mm-hmm. Did anyone not do one of the things? Everyone did it. Wow. Everyone did every task. Yeah. I mean, if you refuse to do the task, like, publicly in front of your yeah, tribe. Yeah, I know. Like, it's, like, peer pressure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's, like, you don't want to be the reason your tribe lost. This is all-stars. Like, you yeah. have to do it. You have to. Whatever it says, like, you are going to do it, basically. Like, they could write anything, and basically, you're just going to do it. I wonder if anyone, like, purposely missed so they didn't have to do it. <laughs> well, you don't know what the tasks are. You hit a cup. And I know, then, but like, just out of fear. Fear pause. Oh, I mean, Jackson missed fear. it all. Maybe he was scared. He didn't get a Jackson, single one. Oh, Jackson's not afraid of anything. Come on. <laughs> I, I, like the, <laughs> I like the idol clue part of it. I thought that was a fun wrinkle. Mm-hmm. I was just thinking about that. I was like, on our season, who would you have given it to on the other tribe? Because obviously I would have wanted to give it to Mike, but I don't know if I would have said that, you know, in front of everyone. Mm-hmm. Hmm. I feel like you got to just pick some, pick who you want to pick and then make up a reason later. Like, mm-hmm. you can just say, like, oh, it's the first person I thought of, or oh, whatever, you know. I think I almost would have said no. Because no? I don't want anyone. I think it would have been either Mike or no for me. Because you could say no, right? No. Yeah, I thought, I, I thought you could say no. You could either give oh, yeah. it to someone or say no. Yeah, it said, it said that in the, in the mm-hmm. channel. Oh, it did? Yeah. yeah. Oh. No, I didn't realize that. Mm-hmm. that. You could say no. I think I would have said, said no. no. You mean, like, you said no, and then, like, you, the, you don't take the cup away, though. Yeah. Oh, so really? then, like, then your tribe has hit the cup again. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I like, didn't the task has that. to be done. Oh. The task has to be done, or else like you don't get the cup. Interesting. So huh. like, I, I feel no like I just, like, your tribe losing. I, I was just thinking about it. I feel like I on if this happened on our season, I, I I feel like my gut instinct would have been to give it to Kevin to cause chaos, and then I would have like immediately <laughs> regretted it and be like, wait, why did I say that? That's really That's dumb so of me, funny. but I feel like that would have been my first thought. Like, ooh, okay, let's get some <laughs> drama going on that trap just because we all like Kevin or whatever. That'd be funny. I feel like you got to give it to someone, at least this season two, you give it to someone who you think's on the bottom. Mm-hmm. Like AJ? Like, oh, trying to yeah. cause chaos. Yeah. 
But AJ wouldn't even use yeah. it. I guess yeah, like, would have told Maggie about it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I forgot about that. Yeah, you know, I don't know if I would have said Mike. I don't know. I mean, Jesse said Jesse said Leia because of vibes, right? That was mm-hmm. Emily, yeah. Oh yeah, Emily, Emily, yeah. It's funny. There's a cut confessional where Jesse, I think, was explaining her reasoning, and she said like, "Oh, initially, I was thinking of giving it to Sam because he's like also on the rowing team and like we're on the rowing team together." But then I like heard that like Sam's sketchy or something, so I decided to <laughs> give it to Bailey instead. And you did see that Jesse and Bailey kind of have this. Mm-hmm. Um, relationship as well like jesse through noah yeah i mean bailey has a relationship with everyone in passing yeah in passing, in passing. True. yeah from all her, all her dimension hopping she mm-hmm. kind of runs into everyone interesting yeah 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 so she's yeah really close to people from all the different like alternate versions of them so it's exactly. like she's besties with like universe xyz <laughs> version of jesse but yeah yeah, that's why it's all in passing. Mm-hmm. It's all in passing. That makes some more <laughs> sense now. Yeah. 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 Um, what else happened? Oh, I guess the Kevin's poll on t- was that Twitter or Instagram? <laughs> I think it was on Twitter. Twitter. Yeah. Okay, yeah. it actually took me a hot sec to. Re- I was like, is fear like something I like don't know? Like, is that like a sexual <laughs> thing that I just don't know? <laughs> but I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I love how it is like because of the meme, everyone like it's like all the votes went to fear because mm-hmm. <laughs> it was spelled wrong. Also, speaking of Kevin, so is he patient two or patient one of COVID and mm. just spreads the entire tribe now? Well, Lucy's patient zero. Yeah, so yeah. He's, so he's one so, patient one. Yeah, after Kevin's zero. patient yeah. one. Yep. How did uh, Lucy spread it to Kevin? Wasn't she up in the challenge? Didn't they have? It's just the ping pong balls were in everyone's mouths. Mm-hmm. But Kevin was already sick going mm. into it. Maybe maybe Megan was actually patient one. Mm. You know how Lucy and Megan, they're talking. Then Megan mm. runs into Kevin the last episode. Oh. When, they, when, yeah. they, when she sees him idol searching, maybe Megan's like asymptomatic COVID. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Unknowingly. <Megan's> <laughs> mm-hmm. but that, that then means that Jackson probably has it too. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Shit. But, oh, wait. my Okay, my Survivor Maryland quote was when he said production really made this episode about word of mouth in every way. <laughs> snaps. Very, very how about, snap, snap, snap. How about all the static kissing? Very like anticlimactic. That. Give me some Maggie Jeremy. Mm-hmm. Why didn't we yeah. get Nick Kevin? We were robbed of Nick Kevin kissing parts. I mm-hmm. know. Yeah, Cooper got, Cooper got kind of rejected, right? Didn't Cooper want to kiss Nick? <laughs> Cooper's like, yeah, Nick, here. All right, I'll do it. Fine, I'll do it. And then Nick was like, nope, my boyfriend will be mad. Cooper's like, dang, dang. Oh, good. I don't have to kiss. Good, that's, that's what I wanted. <laughs> yeah. I didn't want to just strip down and kiss you right now. <laughs> oh. Yeah. I, I I do wish we kind of had some more people from the past come in. Like I, I would have liked to see Mike come in and like you know redeem himself in this challenge. Oh, that would be great. We needed that. That could have been like one of the things you have to do if you get the cup. You know, you have to beat Mike one on one beer pong. It's probably pretty easy though. <laughs> that would have oh, been easy. Easy. Mm-hmm. Um, also, do so you guys Nick must have been Nick must have been really drunk then when he beat Mike. In season two, because <laughs> as we saw here, Nick is only good at beer pong when he's drunk. You know, he took yeah. a shot until he hits him. Yeah, but yeah. this there was no alcohol involved in this challenge. And I, I saw, I did see when they announced that Leia had like a little eye roll. Like I think she was a little mad. I think she wanted <laughs> to get drunk at this challenge. It sounds about right. Well, also it's the fact that the challenge probably went pretty long because then two teams had to face off again mm-hmm. with like normal beer pong, and that actually takes mm-hmm. a while sometimes. Yeah, that came to take a while. It seemed like Dylan and Aaron, it made sense. Um, I think that like a lot of the reason for them being chosen, I mean, they did pretty well during the challenge. And then also like, it was kind of their backs up against the wall and our mm-hmm. tribe all knew that. So it was like, all right, like your guys are up the wall. Like you guys can- yeah. like, You're gonna wanna save yourself the your most. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, also like it would suck to have like someone else do it and then lose and it's like, oh, like I wish that I was up there. Mm-hmm. You know? So it makes sense, like, okay, like, 
they went and did it. And, like, they were way behind, and they almost came back. Yeah. Leia and Kevin won, right? Yeah. They did. They did. Power Kevin, duo. And Jackson's now 3-0 and in challenges this season. <laughs> he's finally – he's living up to the hype, finally. He is. <laughs> and Kevin's a frat star now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I love also it, Lucy um, yelling at Emily B for having her elbows. Elbows, elbows. 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 <laughs> Lucy knows. She's no longer part of Scrappa, but she's still the elbow yeah. elbow police. She is. Lucy. Uh, I think we just see a lot of like producer Lucy come out in this. <laughs> okay, so then are we done with the challenge then? Or anyone yeah, like else? So. Want? so yeah. Why did you guys only have 24 hours to scramble? Was this like just because of scheduling or did the producers want it to be like a fast week? I think that's just how the scheduling worked out. Oh, okay. And that's how it is most of the time mm -hmm. whenever people are free, you know? Yeah. Because I remember our season, we would go like weeks without having tribal. <laughs> yeah, it depends. Like sometimes we would, but then sometimes mm -hmm. we had like a day. Yeah. I guess it's harder with like a 21 person cast even when you're, when you're doing a double vote out like you still have to I feel like you have to keep it up at a higher pace. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Um not that much time yeah. really. Yeah, so I guess yeah, what's your your first thoughts right now is just to keep it safe, you know, between Aaron and Dylan, you know, there's not it doesn't seem too complicated for you, right? Yeah, I mean, you saw it in so you saw like in this episode, kind of the chronology is obviously that the Abby stuff happened, Abby bomb happened. Mm -hmm. um, and I talked with Megan about it. She told me about her and Jackson dating. She told Adam as well. You know, we knew that our idols were fake, all that. And that was all before the challenge. So Wait, can I, can I pause went... real quick, actually? Yes. Sorry. So it's not really entirely clear. Like, I think I feel like I thought at first when the Abby bomb that like everybody in the game immediately knew. I thought but, that too. So who actually knows at this point? Yeah. yeah, that's a good question. So basically it's interesting in that the Abby bomb happens and Megan and Jackson basically assume like, oh, it's all out. Like everyone knows about it. Our games are fucked. What happened was Abby had told Emily B and Abby told Bailey. That is it. Those two people knew. Those people were told by production, do not tell anybody else. And they did abide by that. They did not tell anybody else. So the only people that knew about it were Emily B and Bailey. Hmm. Um, Megan and Jackson assumed, oh, they're gonna, they're probably gonna break the rules and tell everybody about it. So they basically assumed, like, we're fucked. Like, so might as well get ahead of it and start telling people on our own. Um, even though that isn't actually what happened, they actually did it. They actually did abide by what the producer said. They didn't tell anyone. Hmm. But Megan also, you know, she knew like she knew that I knew that my idol was fake. So she knew I was probably going to have suspicions. She assumed I would find out about it. So she decided to tell me and Adam about her relationship. And at that point, it was, you know, me and Adam and mm -hmm. it was Emily B and Bailey that knew about it. You know, we didn't know that Emily B and Bailey knew. We didn't really know. You know, we weren't told all that stuff. We just heard had heard this from Megan. And in the conversations we had with Megan, Megan kind of like implied like, oh, everyone else is going to know about this. Like, it's kind of too late. Like, it's a matter of time before everyone finds out. And you saw that in the challenge after that, like she publicly picked Jackson to give the idol clue to because they were kind of operating on the assumption like everyone already knows about our relationship mm -hmm. anyway. So might as well, you know, just like there's no use in hiding it anymore. But that actually that assumption was actually not correct. I mean, mm -hmm. nobody else knew about it. So that's why you see Will after the challenge confused like, yeah megan and jackson were hate each other why is she giving him an idol clue so and it's i think that they really kind of it sucks because like they just they had to start they had to start operating under the assumption that they didn't know who knew what and they yeah. were also operating under some paranoia um assuming that everyone knew about this when it that actually wasn't the case mm. so you didn't know until she told you about her and jackson but you did know that your idol was fake correct yeah so you saw in the episode abby tells me my idol is mm -hmm. fake i think she was going to tell me about megan and jackson and, and i told her, her like i don't want to oh, know anymore yeah. like so i actually didn't know about it but i think that megan maybe assumed that i did um gotcha. so I don't know. It's, it's really confusing honestly like there's just so much that happened in such a short amount of time there's a lot of chaos like 
So it's, it's, it's really hard to kind of depict, I think, in the episode who knew what and when. Mm -hmm. And like, I feel like that really just like speaks to, I feel like Abby said that happened with multiple different people. Like she tried to tell things so like, no, no, don't tell me. Like, I feel like we as a whole, like have a pretty high integrity playing this game. Like it doesn't feel good to win if we're like, you know, yeah, get far in this game if you're just do it by cheating, you know. And and even yeah. like Jackson says, like cheating is good, but I feel like a lot of times when people say like cheating and survivor, like oh you lie and cheat to get the way. It's not like yeah. cheating and that you're actually like breaking rules. It's cheating and that like yeah. you know, mm -hmm. you know, you tell somebody you're doing one thing, you're doing another thing, or like you're I don't know. It's like more of like kind of like a I don't know, like in the game cheating, you know. Yeah, you're like trying to find little advantages with people or whatever. Yeah. It's not actually mm -hmm. breaking the rules and you know finding out information you shouldn't. Yeah, no, that yeah. makes it not fun. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I was upset even just knowing my idol is fake because it was like, yeah. I mean, okay, sure, it's okay now. It's I guess it's good information for my game to know that, but I don't. It's like okay, well, I shouldn't have known that. Like, yeah. it's like you just don't want any mm -hmm. caveats towards like anything that happens, and you know, also as you see, it actually it ends up I think impacting me negatively that I end up hearing all this information because it kind of starts this like kind of erodes a lot of trust between me and Megan that mm -hmm. if I hadn't known any of that, then it, it you know, we would have just kept operating under our alliance. But yeah. It sucks. Yeah. Um, one thing I will say, I think that a lot of people kind of were assuming like, oh, now that Sam and Adam know all this information about Megan and Jackson, like they're going to turn on Megan. Now they don't trust Megan anymore. Megan's on the bottom. It was definitely true that I trusted her less and like Adam trusted her less, but I mean, as you saw in the episode, like we were still just like it's after the challenge went, we were kind of just went right back to normal. Like, all right, well, here's our alliance, slam alliance. You know, I was sticking with that alliance. I I told Megan I still trust you way more than Aaron and Dylan. And like to to me and Adam's knowledge, like our alliance was still fine. And and Lucy is like, okay, we thought that it's still going to be this four person alliance. We trusted Megan enough to like, okay, let's split the votes two two. We were just we kind of wanted to just put it all past us i think to an extent like because i think we understood that they she did it on not to be personally like she wasn't trying to betray us she mm -hmm. just was playing the game and it, the fact that also like the way it came out sucked like we didn't want to hold that against her so like as far as we were concerned like our alliance was still holding up it was still the same we were still going to stick with it but it caused a lot of paranoia on megan's mm -hmm. end and so I was also a little confused. Um, she got the impression from that meeting that one of you said that she was on the bottom of the alliance, but yeah. did, did one of you actually say that? Or like, was it just kind I, of like a weird vibe thing? I thought it was I, that yeah. somebody said that she would be the, the target or something. Like mm -hmm. she'd be the first target. Mm -hmm. No, no one ever said that. I, I think wow. that it was multiple. So one thing was in this meeting with Lucy that she talks about, Lucy said like, oh, we just need to get through this vote. And I think that Megan interpreted that as like, oh, Lucy just wants to get through this vote and then she isn't going to stick with me anymore. Mm. But Lucy I had Lucy had no uh. clue about any of this. Mm -hmm. She had no clue about like the leak <laughs> or Megan and Jackson. Like she had, she, she was just saying, I think that Lucy was just like thinking like, oh, we just need to get through this split vote and then there's going to be a swap or, mm -hmm. or then like, you know, we'll flush an idol out. We don't have to worry about it. But right. Megan, I think her paranoia, she interpreted that as like, oh, Lucy doesn't want to stick with me anymore. Then this alliance of the four of us meeting Adam had a line where he was saying like, oh, it makes sense that Aaron and Dylan are trying to flip Megan because they are assuming that the other, that the three of us, Adam, Sam and Lucy are close, which Megan interpreted that as like, oh, Adam publicly admitting that Megan is on the bottom of the four person alliance, which I don't really know what he meant when he said that. It doesn't, I didn't really, in the moment, I don't know what he was talking about really. I think that, I don't really know what he was saying, honestly, but at the times, I mean, like, Megan, I think that I actually saw Megan as my number one person in the entire game. Like, in coming in this episode, like, mm -hmm. I had thought that I found an idol with Megan, and I was didn't tell Lucy or Adam about this. Like, I was like, Megan's my number one person. Adam saw Megan as her number one person. If anything, she was on the top of the alliance. She did mm -hmm. take, she did lose some trust from me and Adam, but I think that she still was a lot more in the know as far as information than Lucy was, even all the way up until this tribal council and Lucy, I remember at the time she actually trusted Megan a lot more than she trusted Adam. So okay. Lucy trusted M Megan more. Adam was closer to Megan than he was to Lucy. 
And, you know, I kind of, I used to have Megan as my number one. Mm -hmm. I think after that, it dropped a little bit, but I still trusted her. So I, I don't know. It, it's tough to say if there really was a top or bottom, but I can definitely see how in that meeting of us four, Megan felt like, you know, her, the the agreement that we had to vote off Aaron didn't align with what she wanted, which was to vote off Dylan. And like, okay, whatever Adam said in that meeting was definitely not good. It definitely made her feel like she was on the bottom. So I can totally understand why she felt that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, and that's like the number one thing in an alliance. Like nobody can feel like they're at the bottom. And she almost got you out. Like, honestly, if you yeah. hadn't been warned that like she might flip, you would have been a goner. Yeah, would have been out three, two, one. Mm -hmm. That would have been wild. But your yeah. survivor spidey tingly mm -hmm. senses kicked in. I mean, you said you were getting flashbacks to like season two when you got voted out. Oh, yeah, I love that moment. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> It felt really similar. So like, I remember when I got voted off season two, how I got this, like, I got the text from, from you, Jack, like, oh, Mike wants to meet mm -hmm. up like right before tribal. Oh, yeah. And I was like, yeah. oh, like that's, I remember just like in the back of my mind, I was like, that's weird. Like, <laughs> why would that be happening? Yeah. And, and I kind of just brushed it off. We got to tribal council, Sarah, I remember like you wouldn't look me in the eye before tribal council or during tribal council. And I was like, that feels a little bit off. Like, why Why is Sarah not, like... And she was shaking her head and she me? was talking to you. Oh, yeah, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> but it's like you get those little weird, like, things that just feel a little bit off, those little gut feelings, and I just, like, kind of just brushed them off or, like, mm -hmm. wanted to stick with the plan, and I got voted off. And then now this time, it's like, similar things felt like they are happening. Like, yeah, I heard shortly before Tribal Council, like, Megan is texting Adam, still kind of considering flipping, she said that she wouldn't, but I'm like, the what fact that she she's even considering it's a red flag. Like, why would she be considering it this close to the vote? And, you know, Megan wouldn't look me in the eye at tribal council. And it, that in the incident, I was like, that reminded me, it was like so much of a parallel that I was like, okay, <laughs> that's it. Like, I'm, I'm going to get voted off if I don't do something. I just, I just knew. Wait, so and you decided at tribal to switch your vote? Yes. Okay. It was actually on the walk to tribal council. I, I remember Lucy telling me, like, say, I was saying to Lucy, like, you know, I could flip my vote to Dylan because you and Adam are voting for Dylan. So there would be three votes on to Dylan. And Lucy was like, Sam, like, you're being too paranoid. Like, mm -hmm. just stick with the plan. Like, we can trust Megan. Um, and I was just, like, very much debating it on the walk there. And I ended up telling them, like, all right, like, I'm just going to stick with the plan. But mm -hmm. I didn't feel good about it, like, inside. Yeah. And then when I got to tribal council, Aaron and Dylan were sitting on one side. And they were like joking around and like laughing. And I was like, why are they in a good mm -hmm. mood right now? They should be mm. in a bad mood because they should <laughs> they just told them they're getting voted off. Mm -hmm. Megan's sitting on the opposite side, like looking at the ground. And I'm like, this, yeah. these vibes are so off right mm -hmm. now. Um, and yeah, that's when I decided, like as I walked up and then, you know, as I went to the booth. But gotcha. I give you balls wow. for that. Give you balls. balls. See, yeah. The, the thing is, like, it seems like too, like that's the obvious thing to do. And, in hindsight but at the time too i was like if megan's still with us and i flip my vote this is a very bad look for me it mm -hmm. looks like i don't mm -hmm. trust my alliance because in the scenario that megan votes where she was supposed to and i put yeah. my vote to dylan it's like, well, now it's suddenly it's like oh like why did you flip your vote did mm -hmm. you not trust me yeah or if dylan has an idol i would have idled myself out so either i had to kind of weigh like what do i think is the most likely and that's really true just, my gut was telling me that megan flipped Mm -hmm. but if i was wrong and i put my vote then i basically either yeah. way you know, I'm, I'm ruining my relationship with megan mm -hmm. yeah I, I really like the moment it reminded me of um millennials versus gen x when michaela gets uh uh blindsided when lucy was like i don't i wasn't the one that flipped it like adam was it you no no it wasn't me and then yeah. you're like yeah no, it was me <laughs> yeah yeah i mean i think that lucy did a good job at this tribal council i think this is something I heard Austin say, like, she was kind of like reassuring Megan, like, listen, like, I mm -hmm. trusted you. Like, yeah. I was sticking with the plan. Like, Adam trusted you. He was sticking with the plan. And, you know, they did. They, they really did trust Megan going in there. Mm -hmm. I, again, like, I, if she, if that vote, that, mo that move is pulled off by Megan, I think it is, it is a good move. It puts her into, like, really good graces with Aaron and Dylan. And, you know, they can work with different people at the swap. But um, 
you know, I can't, and I can't blame Medigan for flipping back either. I mean, why would, mm-hmm. there's no reason she should go to Rock yeah. this early in the game. Right. Yeah. I want to like give some credit to Lucy and Adam for sure. This tribal, because I feel like oh, yeah. you obviously made the big decision to like switch your vote, but I feel like after that, like there wasn't really much you could do to convince Megan. So like you, you were, mm-hmm. I feel like mostly like pretty silent after that. And like, for right. good reason, I feel it was like, all yeah. Lucy and Adam. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Especially mm-hmm. Adam, yeah. you know, yeah. going off with her. Oh yeah. Adam gets, Adam deserves a lot of credit for this. I mean, he was the one that, you know, I think that he really recognized that, I mean, this was him being genuine, but he also recognized he needed to make Megan feel comfortable mm-hmm. flipping. You know, I, I think that like my pitch was like, strategically you shouldn't go to rocks for dylan lucy was like my pitch is like Mm -hmm. i trusted you i still trust you adam's pitch was it's going to be okay like Mm -hmm. you still have me like it's okay like i don't want to go to rocks you don't want to go to rocks like it'll be all right i think that's what megan needed to hear is that like it will be it'll be okay um because just as easily adam could have it Mm would have been very easy megan was standing strong like i'm not going to flip it could adam just as easily could have just said like all right like i'm afraid of going to rocks like i'm gonna flip but like he stood strong and like it was basically a game of chicken like who's gonna mm-hmm. say first that they're willing to flip because they both come into it saying like i'm not flipping i'm not flipping yeah damn makes you wonder about the universe where megan for some reason stays strong and they get, everybody goes to rocks like i wonder i wonder I who goes you know i know. have to ask bailey to check out Wait, that <laughs> It'd be well, Megan and Adam, they have a 50 50 chance of yeah. being one of them. It's those two, Lucy and Aaron, drawing the mm-hmm. rock. That's wild. Why do I feel like it would have been Lucy? I don't know why. I feel like that would be the funniest outcome. <laughs> that would be, that's like yeah. that's the only outcome where Megan wins, honestly, because mm-hmm. if Lucy draws the rock. Yeah, so mm-hmm. it could have happened though. It's one of four chance. Damn. What's up with Kevin's like one side beef with you, by the way? He's like, his goal in this game is to get you out. And I'm like, I feel like this is very one sided. <laughs> I mean, he said in the in the episode, like, I want to say Morris out for no reason. I just really <laughs> want him out of this game. He just needs Ohana. <laughs> yeah, is he still holding beef from you voting him out season two? That's my guess. You mm-hmm. know, he, he, I mean, he says that he sees, he, he says earlier that he wants me and Cooper out. I think he sees us as, you know, connected people, threats, probably like, yeah, I got him out in season two. So I can see that as being reasons. Also, like, I think he just thinks that it would be funny if I was voted mm-hmm. off early. <laughs> like, he's like, oh, Sam cares about this game a lot. It'd be great if you went out early, you know, dreams crushed, <laughs> that kind of thing. You know, Kevin loves that. He loves crushing dreams. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess we're kind of doing it in opposite order of yeah. what happened in the, but isn't this what actually happened in real life was. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This is what happened in real life is that uh, Dylan was voted off first. I think that the editing switched mm-hmm. it all around just oh, for dramatic purposes. Mm-hmm. But I didn't know that. Our tribal council was actually the first. Okay. So should we do a, a eulogy for Dylan before we move on to the, the paddock council? Tribal yeah. council? Oh yeah. Before we do that, I, I mm-hmm. want to give a huge shout out to, Aaron and Dylan for the text of the century. I think we got to yes, talk about yeah. that and Cooper's involvement with, with this whole thing. Mm-hmm. Which is um, what? So I had told Cooper about Megan and Jackson dating, mm-hmm. thinking, which was a mistake on my end. Um, I assumed he would not tell anybody about that. Me and Cooper had been sharing a lot of information with each other. He was the one who told me about Oh, it's going to be six one on Tom at the previous tribal council, which I used against him to try to cause <laughs> chaos. And then, like in a similar way, I told him that information about Megan and Jackson, which he then used against me. And, you know, he was using it more just he wanted to save Aaron, but mm-hmm. that information ultimately is, you know, Dylan and Aaron may put that into that text to Megan, and that was a convincing factor to get her to flip. Is they kind of like were, I think that it ended up being a little even. They made it, I think that they ended up even like twisting it or exaggerating even more like, oh, Sam's telling everybody about um, you and Jackson Um, and like kind of making it even sound like, oh, I had told them where like she's like, oh, why is Sam telling our enemies about me and Jackson? Like he's obviously just like trying to tank my game, Mm -hmm. which like there's some truth in that. I 
she had asked me not to tell anybody and I told Cooper, but that was the only person I had told versus Aaron and Dylan coming to her makes her think that I'm telling everyone, including them. And that's ultimately what really got Megan to flip against me. So like, I give them a lot of credit for, they played really well from the bottom. I mean, mm-hmm. they got kind of unlucky by a few things that happened here, but that was a really, it just really good gameplay all around by Aaron and Dylan in this episode. And, and the one and the previous one too, they were kind of building up to this, to this episode where they're playing well from the bottom. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's pretty much ideal of what you want to happen. If you're playing from the bottom of the situation is to get a late bombshell, you know, that is able to flip somebody to your side yeah. and like tarnish their relationship with someone else. So like, there's not really much more I feel like they could have done, <laughs> you know? Yeah. I mean, also like just kind of give them a lot of credit for having this, this move is possible because they were playing, they kind of recognized that they had needed to have good relationships on the other tribes Mm -hmm. and having those good relationships on the other tribes is what, you know, made Cooper want to help them. Um, So like, you know, that was really big. Yeah. So yeah. Do we want to get to a eulogy then for Dylan? Anything else we want to cover? No, I think it's good. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, it definitely, it's fun watching Dylan this season, you know, him playing with house money as he acknowledges a few times, you know, like, you know, I already won the crown, so who really cares? So, yeah, you know, but it ended up being him playing like, you know, kind of like a similar game to his first time and, you know, just playing kind of under the radar for a while and just building connections until he really couldn't, you know, had to be in that more of a driver's seat for the first time. And, you know, that was really fun to watch. Like, obviously, yeah, like, like we were just talking about the last second bombshell text. Um, you know, for somebody coming in with being the only winner, you know, obviously that puts a little bit of a target in your back, but it didn't seem like he had that huge of a target really by other people. Like, you know, his win might have been a little bit disrespected. I don't know. But, um, you know, got to love the sound bites the new sound bites throughout it. I hope they still like somehow remain in the edit, even though he's not. In That's it. what like I'm that saying. Yeah. Yeah. I think we'll still see him in the sound bites. Hopefully. Mm-hmm. <laughs> ah, give me that idol. <laughs> That's my favorite. Yeah, idol. <laughs> That's a good one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What do you guys have to say about Dylan 2.0? Yeah, I feel like I mean he is a really good low key player. It's like you don't you kind of think he's not doing anything, but then you see what he says in these some of these meetings, and you're like, no, he's like really smart and how he goes about everything. Um, he's just, his demeanor is just very easy to get along with. So people aren't mm-hmm. like super threatened by him, <laughs> which is like a good skill to have in this game. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think he could have gone far if things had sh- like, if maybe Akshay had stayed that first time, you know, that first week, uh, I think he could have made a run. So. Or like, even if, you know, this, if Sam doesn't switch the vote last second, yeah. you know, he could yeah. have been in a really good spot now with like, you know, him and Me- like now Megan is probably have a good connection with them, and you know they, they still have all the connections on their side, like with Cooper and stuff. So mm-hmm. yeah, and Sam out of the game, you know, he could have definitely yeah. made a run out of it. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, I want to say that like, first of all, I definitely underrated Dylan a lot. I think this this time around, like as a player, I didn't un- see the connections that he had, and I think that's a big, um, you know, it's a it's a big compliment to his game that like similar in season three, he played, he had this relationship with Devin that nobody knew about. And that ultimately is what really helped him win the game is because he's very unassuming, mm-hmm. very charismatic, but people just don't, people tend to underestimate him because he's low key and he's good at hiding what he's doing. And he did the same exact thing this time around and no one recognized it. He has his yeah. relationships with Bailey. He has a relationship with Cooper. He has a relationship with Andrew. He has one with Will that I, that wasn't really shown on screen, but he has that alliance too. He has all these secret alliances that, you know, I didn't that people didn't know about, and it as a result, people a lot of people wanted to help him out, but also like he wasn't seen as a threat because people didn't mm-hmm. people thought he was more of a lone wolf than he actually was. So he was playing a really good game, and you know the Akshay vote didn't go his way. That was tough for him. Um, I don't really think there's much he did wrong in that first episode. Honestly, like he just was not on the right side of the votes and a lot of it just because of his relationship with Lucy and just how the tribe shook out. Mm-hmm. And even then, like he played really well from the bottom. 
he made a really good move with Adam with like that fake idol and mm -hmm. used that to get Adam even more on his side and wanting to keep him. And he, the way he went out was very much like honestly kind of a fluke. Aaron was supposed to be voted off at this tribal council. And the only reason Dylan went out is simply because of just like the arbitrary way we decided to split votes where um, Adam and Lucy voted for Dylan, me and Megan voted for Aaron. If it had been flipped, then the three votes would have been on Aaron instead. Like the only reason Dylan got three votes is because I had to vote the same way that Adam and Lucy were voting. And it just so happened that they were voting for Dylan. If it had been the opposite and they were voting for Aaron, I would have flipped my vote to Aaron and it would have played out the same way. And Aaron would have went home. Um, you know, or, so there's so many factors that all had to happen mm -hmm. just the right way for him to go home. Yeah. And they all happened. And it really sucks for him because I don't really think that there's a lot of mistakes you can point to in his game this time around. Um, so I really like Dylan's gameplay this time around, especially watching it, you know, years later. I think that he was really great in this season. Love his sound bites. Um, and I think that the way he played here just really proves that he did earn his win in season three. And he is mm -hmm. 100%. as good as as good as the hype, mm -hmm. you know, as good as he's hyped up to be. He's more than just a meme winner, you know. <laughs> Uh, that's just so crazy to me that there should have been like three different results of that tribe council. Like it should have been Aaron, it should have been you, or it should have been Rox. And like, yeah, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, I guess maybe we can debate if it should have been Rox. Like, I feel like Megan made the right move and not in flipping back and not going to Rox. Yeah. But that was still a very real possibility, you know? Yeah. So, damn. And to be honest, if the Abbey bomb never happens, Aaron goes home with this tribal council, mm -hmm. most likely. Um, because the votes are split on Aaron and Dylan, and there's and Aaron just goes in the revote. So like, all those things had to happen for him to go home. Damn. So it, it sucks. Yeah, Rip. and that's where the luck comes into play with Survivor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So maybe he used up all of his luck, you know, his first time out there. <laughs> Three. Yeah. yeah. You know what? What does it matter? He already got my. He already he got. Really his has insert mm -hmm. the clip. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm saying that. Yeah. Okay. So I guess the other tribal wasn't as juicy in terms oh, wait, of how can we actually. Click oh yeah, we have to rank Dylan 1.0 versus 2.0. Oh yes, yes, yes. Oh yeah. Right. Well, so he's for sure. We know he's the best ever uh, 19th boot, right? Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So best Dylan 1.0 versus 2.0. I mean, it's hard oh. to say he played better than when he won, but <laughs> yeah, it's true. It's kind of hard to beat the first time. Mm -hmm. Um, I think. Overall, though, it's not like his gameplay got worse. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think he was just more unlucky this time around. Yeah, like if I wanted to play Devil's Advocate, I could say, well, like, he actually came into this one a lot harder, I think, from the beginning and yeah. worked a lot more in building those relationships and having those cross tribe things and doing the idol with Adam and, you know, doing this text at the last minute. But of course, yeah. it's still hard to, you know, say a game that he played where he got voted out the second time he went to trial, but was better than when he won. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, objectively, statistically, he didn't vote correctly this season. He voted yeah. correctly basically every time last time, but at the same time, like in the way that Dylan played the first three weeks, this season compared to the first three weeks in season three, like he didn't really do that much in season three and he didn't have to, but this season, I feel like we saw basically almost just as much gameplay from Dylan in three weeks as we saw like the whole time of season yeah. three. Like, mm -hmm. yeah. And I feel like the moves he made here were very equal. Like, as far as like last time, you know, he whatever made alliance with Devin, he stole Brady's immunity. This time he like texts her the century, gets Megan to flip. He, you know, has you brought, he like makes a relationship with a fake idol with Adam. He has these secret, he has like four secret alliances in other tribes. Like, I liked it a lot, but yeah, I mean, you can't rate the winning season mm -hmm. i think lower than a 19th place season yeah yeah so okay. yeah dylan 1.0 better than dylan 2.0 i think we can say yeah, yeah <laughs> i feel good about that all right let's say that to close it off one detriment to his game this time i think is his relationship with lucy obviously there's stuff outside the game that impacted mm -hmm. it but i think he mm -hmm. probably he had played that a little bit better or differently there's maybe a, a scenario where you know i think that would help him out even more if him yeah. at least you're on a good page you're on the same page you know yeah yeah
So the other tribal, we got Odawa. Mm -hmm. Not quite as dramatic, but yeah. There still was, it seemed to be, at least the edit made it seem like there was a bit of, you know, indecision about which way to go, you know, before Tribal Council. Yeah, I don't think anyone expected it to be that unanimous. Mm -hmm. I was looking at, like, the comments in the chat. Mm -hmm. I think people were a little shocked. And we kind of covered that with Emily the other day. Yeah. That's, like, why it wasn't. Um, yeah. I mean, like, a big one for that is, like, I feel like... Nick really wanted to save Emily, I think. Like, he really did. I think that Nick very seriously, like, wanted to vote off Andrew. And you saw, I love this conversation, too, where he's mm -hmm. with Cooper on the swing and, like, trying to convince Cooper to vote off Andrew. And Andrew, like, the comes, swing. like, interrupts their meeting. <laughs> the zoom in on Nick's face. Mm -hmm. He's <laughs> not happy at all. Oh. But, like, yeah, Cooper, I mean... Nick really did want to flip. He just, I, mean, I don't think there's a scenario where him, Emily, and Sarah tie at 3 3 and are hoping Cooper or Bailey flip on the revote. Mm -hmm. But I really think that I want to give a lot of credit to Andrew, actually. Like, I think that very easily, if Andrew hadn't made really good connections, he could have, the vote could have changed onto him. But mm -hmm. like, it seemed like he has a really good relationship with Cooper and with Bailey, to where neither of them want him voted off. And that's ultimately like, I think why the vote we they could end up not voting for him and you know Emily realizes that plan is going to fail she like changes she pivots to Bailey but um, gotcha. if he hadn't made such a good relationship with Bailey I think that Bailey would have been willing to flip I think she even mm -hmm. says it at some point like I would have earlier been considered I actually earlier would have considered voting off Andrew but now I actually feel really tight with Andrew and I don't want to vote him off so like credit goes to Andrew for like developing these relationships with Cooper and Bailey to where they're not going to flip on him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And he's still only person who doesn't have a vote against him. Right. So never. True. Is that true? Is he the only person this yeah. guy's? I know he said that, but is, is that actually true? true. Did Lucy yeah. get any votes against her? Yeah. Kevin. Yeah. Yeah. yeah oh, yeah. okay. You're right. Okay. Never mind. Yeah. <laughs> and, and yeah, well, I guess like, Maybe Emily, I don't know. I, there's something to be said about like, maybe there could have been like potential for some sort of like Emily, Tom, Nick, Sarah alliance. Because mm -hmm. it kind of seems like at this point, Emily and Tom are gone. And now Nick and Sarah both are like not super happy with how everything has been shaken out. But it's kind of like mm -hmm. too late. Like, you know, now there's, they kind of lost those numbers. But like, um, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. If, I don't think that Sarah ever would have worked with Tom though. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, he's a uh, he's hard one to work with. If unless you're, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'm glad they're really, trying to make it work. Yeah. And Emily got screwed over by the the Tom stuff too, because mm -hmm. Cooper. I think a big reason is Cooper like just doesn't trust Emily anymore. Yeah. The top that like she tried to save Tom and it pissed him off, even though she didn't. And it, it sucks. She had nothing to do with that, but. You know, that really, that really did uh, hurt her as well. So a big part of it was you still. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I think if she had maybe been able to get to Bailey before um, Andrew, then that could have helped her out. Because I think that that really was. Cooper probably never was going to vote off Andrew. I mean, you could see that they even had pre-existing pre relationship. They were neighbors. But. Bailey and Andrew's relationship that formed during this game and like, you know, if Emily also is like really tight with Andrew or with Bailey, maybe the vote gets shifted onto Sarah instead, or maybe mm -hmm. Bailey's going to flip on Andrew and, and protect Emily. So I feel like that's something that could have helped her out. Yeah. All right. Do we want to rank her? Yeah, we can do our quick eulogy first for Paddock. Oh yeah. I feel mm -hmm. like uh she definitely came into this game in a lot of different position place than she did the first time you know she had won twice in her daily games since the first time mm -hmm. you know and obviously the big thing was the her versus Aaron drama that we covered pretty pretty well I think with our interview with her so I don't want to we don't have to retread any of that but yeah um you know and it just seemed like it was one of those things where like 
she could have like there was not a ton i feel like she could have done as well like she was just kind of in a bad spot from you know things outside of her control with you know you sam kind of screwing her over unintentionally and like you know it was super fun seeing her um and you know she played super hard and like i i you know laying into nick and the most intense survivor discussion he ever had so um she's definitely always a treat to have on the screen sad to sad to see her go so early but i don't know if there's much she could have done yeah i mean i agree with that and she's like someone I, I guess a lot of people are like this but she's just so passionate about survivor that like you can just see it when they play um but yeah i feel like a lot of the, a lot of the times like all these like kind of earlier boots it's almost like not their fault as much mm -hmm. I, I feel like that happens a lot um it's more so like a bit of just unlucky how things sh like shook out and how the tribes were made and everything like that mm -hmm. um it's tough on these returning seasons especially yeah what place when did she get her first time around again i forgot she, she was was she sixth place right Six? No, oh, not okay. sixth place. No, she was tenth place. I thought, oh, okay. okay. I, I, because I knew I, sh I shared a ranking with her, but it was my second time. Oh. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so tenth last time, I guess technically eighteenth mm -hmm. this time. So I guess how do you want to do this? Because technically there were other eighteenth people, but we ranked them with the first boot. So should we just yeah. have her yeah. on her own for yeah. now? Yeah, I think her on her own. And then start actually doing the comparisons next time. That makes sense. Yeah. 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 But Emily, 1.0 versus 2.0. Oh, um, that's tough. I mean, it was just times, such different circumstances. Yeah. Both times she kind of got screwed by information that wasn't within her control in a way. You know, she kind of got screwed by the Ben Bomb first time and got mm -hmm. kind of screwed by the Tom situation this time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that in her first one, she, in both times, she ended up like very early on first episode, she gets into a trio mm -hmm. that has a lot of influence in the tribe. One with Ben and Will, one with Cooper and Sarah. Um, she kind of has like another number both times who trusts her, but she isn't as much into them. One with Tom, mm -hmm. one with Aaron. Um, Yeah. Did she um, strategize as much her first time? Because I remember a big part of the season was that she like had super long like strategy. Yeah, she almost over strategized. Yeah. yeah, I don't remember her doing that as much the first time around. Mm -hmm. Or maybe it just wasn't shown. Well, I think that just her Ben and Will were just like insanely neurotic. Like mm -hmm. they'd always they, bounce they off be each kind other. of overplaying. Yeah, yeah, and they were like all these like web of lies with like. Aaron in the first time and they kind of had like Jesse and different mm -hmm. like alliances within alliances like they were really gaming it very hard on mm -hmm. Tormenta this and one I feel like, like oh sorry no go ahead I, I was just gonna say I feel like she tried to do that this time too with like Sarah Gallagher and Nick and whatever and they just like weren't having that yeah it wasn't like the same like, yeah uh, yeah chemistry so I mean she definitely found herself in a better spot the first season having the that alliance that wanted to do that so you know and like mm -hmm. and we're able to control like you know a lot of it until the ben bomb and you know all the fallout of that and everything yeah i also want to say as much as cooper says in some instances like oh the reason i didn't trust emily is because of the tom stuff he also in his conversation with andrew it seems like a lot of their decision making was purely like strategic like which partnership is going to give us the best chance of having more allies at a swap? Mm -hmm. And it seems like they're kind of thinking like, oh, I think Bailey will be better to work with in a swap scenario. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But in that case, it's like, it's just so much, it's just as different arguments, you know, like in an all-star season, there's so many other factors and pre-existing relationships. You just don't have to worry about in season three. Mm -hmm. Right. I, I don't, I don't know. know how to rank it. I, I do I would, feel like I still want to say her first time better, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's feel like it's hard with a lot of these early people to, like, when yeah, they went pretty far the first time to judge their whole compare. game. Yeah. So, um, 
I don't know. I think she had more control her, mm-hmm. of the situation the first time around. Yeah. 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 I, I definitely, yeah, that, that's a really good point. Like, I feel like if you look at just on each of her starting tribes, the first time around, she really was like the center of her tribe and had influence over everyone on the tribe. But this time around, I feel like she was a lot more at the mercy of other people. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah. And also like she did, I think that, I mean, I, maybe you just didn't see it on screen, but I didn't really see too much relationship with Nick or Bailey until it felt like it was almost too late. I never really mm-hmm. even started talking with Bailey that much. Maybe it's because she was yeah. trying to get Bailey out, but I feel like that's really something where, like, I I would have liked to seen her have like form an alliance with Bailey from the beginning, and that I think really could have helped her out. Yeah. So cool. I guess we put her first season slightly above. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Well, another yeah. great episode. I'm another excited classic for next episode week. three. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's always episode three. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's like uh, you know that meme with like the hair, like the Harry Potter, like oh, it's always you three. Like it's like yeah. that, yeah. except for it's just like <laughs> episode it's three. Episode three. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. Well. Right. Well, like, yeah. Then. Yeah. Oh, never mind. <laughs> I I was gonna say I feel like we didn't really talk about Sangria, but that's fine. We can always that's talk fine. about them and Jack later. Has to drop. You know, I do have to drop. Yep. But so, yeah. But yeah, we still got one more episode coming out. I assume this is gonna go out before we talk to Dylan. So we are gonna talk to Dylan still. Mm-hmm. So yes. you can tweet us your questions yep. or add us in the Survivor Michigan Reddit Discord thing or text us or instagram dm i don't know if you have any questions for yes dylan um but yeah that was something that was something yeah that was something also in general hit us up like any questions you have about anything Mm -hmm. you know hit us up in the discord hit us up dm us um we'll always be looking at those Mm -hmm. and talking about them um also look forward to paul and joe Power rankings, guys. They'll be giving their yes. recap as well. Cool. Alrighty. Peace out, y'all. See you guys next Peace. time. I give you both balls. Bye. Give you both balls. <laughs> <laughs>